<laughs> okay, uh, in this problem, I'm going to solve uh, 446 in uh, Hibbler. So this is uh, a statically indeterminate problem, except it's a little different flavor. So I guess, you know, it's hard to kind of find different varieties of this, but here's one. So here's a stepped axial structure. So we have two sections, um, different diameters. Uh, we're gonna, they're solid, made out of steel. There's walls at both ends, but initially there's a gap here of 15 millimeters. So the gap is there before the load is applied. Then we apply a force on here of 200 kilonewtons, and it wants you to find the support reactions at A and D. Okay, so what's gonna happen here is if the force at P is sufficient to elongate this such that it comes into contact at D, then it'll become a statically indeterminate problem. All right? So uh, probably you can infer from this that they set up the problem such that P is large enough that this section stretches more than 15 millimeters then obviously we have a statically indeterminate problem we need to figure out the reaction forces x d and a uh, if p isn't big enough to stretch that 15 millimeters then the fact that this wall is here it's never in contact is irrelevant it becomes a statically determinate problem and then the reaction force of a is going to be the negative of p and the reaction force of d will be zero right okay all right so uh, technically we should first check the elongation all right all right, so let's check the total elongation. So, so let's check the elongation as if the wall were not there. All right, so forget the wall and just forgot the elongation. So um, let's get the cross-sectional areas of the sections first. The area of the of uh, the section from A to B is going to be um, pi on four fifty millimeters squared. Let me get my calculator for just a second. So that is um, 0 0.00196 meters squared. And the cross-sectional area from B to C is pi on 4, 25 millimeters squared. So That is 0 0.000491 meters squared. So those are the two cross-sectional areas. All right. So now uh, the total elongation is the elongation of section AB plus the elongation of section BC. All right. If we do the free body diagrams... Here's point C. Assuming it's not in contact, then there's no force on here. So obviously the, the internal reaction force here is zero. And the only reaction force we have is between section A and B. All right? So here we have the P equal to 200 kilonewtons. So the internal reaction force here is obviously equal to that sum of forces, right? So this elongation is going to go to zero because there's no force in it. 
So the total elongation in that case is just the elongation of section AB, which is the force in that section, P AB, times the length of section AB over the cross-sectional area times Young's modulus, and they're all constant, all right? So that gives me delta is equal to 200 kilonewtons times the length, which is 600 millimeters. The millimeters will cancel out with the kilonewtons. The area is 0 0.00196 meters squared. In Young's modulus, it's made out of steel, so that's going to be 200 gigapascals, okay? And then we we'll compute that. That turns out to be 0 0.306 millimeters, okay? Which is obviously greater than the 0 0.15 millimeters. So that means it's going to be in contact. All right. Well, there's. So now we know we have the statically indeterminate problem, which we probably suspected earlier. Uh, so there's two ways you could do this, right? We could go back and let's do two approaches. So here's the first approach. The first approach is sort of the conventional way. We have two equations and two unknowns. So we have sum of forces in the x have to equal to zero. Or in other words, the reaction at A plus P plus the reaction at D all sum to zero. Okay, so this is a, this is assuming here. Here's a reaction force at A, and here's a reaction force at D. Now I know probably that's also going to be in compression, right? Uh, and this one's the, the signs are probably flipped, but I just I'll just put them in the positive direction for now. So you have two unknowns, you need another equation. We use the compatibility equation. The total elongation, which is the elongation of section AB plus the elongation of section BC, has to equal, not zero in this case, but has to equal the um, 0 0.15 millimeters. So we know the elongation is going to be this gap distance, right? That's how much it elongates. And then it comes in contact, and then the reaction force is such that that is the elongation. All right. If the gap were longer, then you would have a bigger distance here. So what that's going to do is automatically compensate for the fact the amount it stretches before it comes into contact. So that's one approach. And you could certainly solve those two equations, the two unknowns. And we can set it up real quick. This is going to be uh, the force in section A, now be careful, we have to use different free body diagrams here, right? Now if we look at section A, or section AB, here's the reaction at A, and then here's that internal force in section AB. So that's going to equal minus the reaction at A. And likewise, in section BC, here's the free body diagram for the section BC, here's the reaction force at D, here's the internal reaction force in that section, again, it's on a negative face, so I draw it so it's positive attention, this has to be equal to RD, okay? They have to equal to zero. All right. So in this one, uh, this would be the force in AB, which is minus RA, times the length of AB, 
over cross-sectional area of AB times Young's modulus. And then this is plus this section here. So it gives me a plus. The force in BC, which is RD, the L of section BC, cross-sectional area of BC, Young modulus, and that all sums to 0 0.15 millimeters. So you can do that. Uh, actually, uh, I'll do the uh, superposition approach. Why? Because um, I've already done half of the superposition problem, right? The superposition problem is, right, you remove the constraint, make it a statically determinant problem, and then apply the appropriate force so that the elongation um, uh, makes it compatible, okay? So if you look, I've already gotten the first uh, subcase for the superposition approach. So let's do it that way. Let's do... Super. So we'll use the superposition approach. So basically, we're going to take this problem, with the force P applied here, and we're going to superimpose on it this problem. Well, let's keep the reaction force in the Let's keep it in the same direction. And that's the unknown reaction force Rd. Okay? All right. So this, this case here, we've already done. Okay? That was actually the first part that checked that it, ex it extended too far. So now let's, let's solve this case. So in this case, again, it's quite easy. I'm going to call this case 1. And this is load case 2. So now let's look at load case 2. So what I'm saying, I already did this before. I'm just to I notate it. Uh oh. Let's go. This section here, where we found that it's 15 millimeters, actually was the solution to load case 1. So you see, I've already done that. Okay, for load case 2, the elongation for loading type 2, that's going to be, again, the elongation of the section AB plus the elongation of BC. And obviously, this is using the loading as shown here. All right, so this is easy. We can do the free body diagram. Obviously, in this case, the reaction force at the wall is minus RD, and then both of these sections have the same internal reaction force of just RD in tension, okay? And so in this case, right, the elongation is going to be um, RD times the length of AB over the cross-sectional area of AB times Young's modulus plus RD length of BC, cross-sectional area of BC, Young's modulus, right? So this term here is the elongation in the first section, and this is the elongation in the section section for this loading. All right, so I can take the RD out. Delta 2 becomes RD. Let's put in some numbers here now. So the length of AB, they're both 600, so actually I can take that out as well. Well, let's put it in here. Well, actually, I'll do this one. One, on the cross-sectional area of AB, which is the, we got to be 0 0.0196 meters squared. The cross-sectional area of BC is um, 0 0.00, well, I'm missing this another zero here. 0 0.00196 and this is 0 
0.491 meters squared. The L actually happen to be the same in this problem. They're both 600, not normally. And the Young's modulus is the same. So we can just take the... Um, 0 0.6 meters over Young's modulus, which is the 200 GPA. All right? And then this becomes... Uh, let's do the math. Seven point six three nine times ten to the minus ninth. Now the units we're going to have here. I put this is all in MKS, so this is going to be um, we have meters. We have a meter squared times a meter. So I got a meter down here. This is a newton per meter squared, so this just becomes uh, meters over Newton times RD equals the displacement, okay? So if this is in Newtons, this becomes meters, right? Okay. So now what's the situation? So we know that the elongation for the first loading case, we already computed that out. That is the point, um, 0.306 meters, millimeters, I'm sorry, millimeters. And the displacement for the second case is going to be this 7.639 times 10 to the minus 9th meter newtons times this unknown reaction force. The actual displacement has to equal the sum of those two. All right, that's the superposition. We take the loading here, or the displacement, let's do it this way. This has a displacement. And then this also has a displacement. The actual displacement, when you apply both forces, is the sum of those two displacements because of superposition. And that still has to go to 0.15 millimeters. Okay? So again, we know the total displacement has to be 0.15 millimeters. So this, I can rewrite this. This is 0 0.306 millimeters plus this term, which is here. Let's convert this to millimeters. So this becomes uh, 7.639 times 10 to the minus 6 millimeters over Newton, Newtons, that's not an M, Newton, times Rd has to equal 0 0.015 millimeters. And now we can solve for Rd, right? Rd is going to be 0 0.015 millimeters minus 0 0.306 millimeters divided by 7.639 times 10 to the minus 6 millimeters over Newton. So this result will be in Newtons, and that becomes 0 0.0, oops, I'm sorry. 0.15, okay? Uh, 0 0.15, 0 0.306 minus is a negative 0 0.156, and then 7.639 to the minus 6, we divide, and that becomes minus 20.4 kilonewtons, okay? 
So that's the reaction at D. It's the unknown reaction at D. All right. So we have to get the reaction at A. Well, we know that the reaction at A plus the reaction at D plus the applied force at P have to sum to zero. And so that gives me that the reaction at A is simply going to be minus the reaction at D minus P, which is 20.4 kilonewtons, a minus and a minus. And then P is uh, 200 kilonewtons, so it's a minus 200 kilonewtons. So that gives me Oops, ah, sorry, I did that wrong. 20.4 minus 200 gives me a minus 179.6 kilonewton. So it's acting in the opposite direction. So actually, if we were to look back at this picture and redraw in the Value for the correct signs, I think I'll do it in red. What we actually have here is at RD, we have a negative reaction force here of the 20.4 kilonewtons, and then at RA, it's a minus sign, so it actually acts in this direction 179.6. Kilonewtons. Okay? So those are the reaction forces. So again, two approaches, right? You can do this direct approach where you have the two equations directly, the sum of forces and the compatibility equation. Okay? Or you could do the superposition. Again, as I mentioned in class, I like, like the direct approach, but superposition worked in this case because, in fact, you know, if you didn't infer, obviously, that it would come in contact, you would want to check that it did elongate at least the gap of uh, 0.15 millimeters. So by doing that check, well, I'm sorry, I'm pointing to the wrong spot. Here's the direct approach. By doing this check, that's actually the first step or the first load case we consider for the superposition approach, right? That actually becomes the same as the check, okay? So, kind of kill two birds with one stone. All right, thanks.